Hello all, welcome back to the channel. Today we are discussing gradient maps and three creative ways that you can incorporate them into your workflow. Let's get started. Okay, so gradient maps are pretty self-explanatory. It's an adjustment layer that takes a look at all the layers below it and it determines the luminosity values of those layers beneath it and maps different colors to different sections of the luminosity. Since the gradient maps only affect the luminosity of that image, I think it's best or it's just easier to use gradient maps on completely desaturated or black and white artwork. It's just easier to composite things in grayscale if you're gonna go ahead and throw a gradient map on top of it later anyway. So to recap, gradient map looks uh, only at the luminosity values of your image and it maps those values to the colors that you choose in this slider right here. So on our left hand side, we have the darker luminosity values that we can control. And on the right hand side, we have the lighter values. So for example, if I were to map this the opposite way by putting the white on the left hand side and the black on the right hand side, which I could do just by pressing this reverse option here, it would just invert our image. So that should give you a bit of an idea of how this works. And if I were to add a color in the midtones here, right smack in the middle of this slider, it would pretty much colorize our image, but it would leave the black blacks of those tonal values and the white whites of the tonal values of your image. So this red is colorizing all of the midtones of this image, but it's leaving the black end of the spectrum and the white end of the spectrum intact. If I were to remove both of these, you would see that our whole thing turns to red. Similarly, if I were to change just the white values of this to red, we would have no more white, we would just have black and red. So we're mapping all those lighter luminosity values to this red instead of the white. So from this, you can gather that if I were to place a color more to the left hand side here, that would be affecting our shadows. So you can see that I'm putting a blue sort of towards the black end of this here. And it's affecting mostly the shadows of my image. And if I put another color near the highlights of this, it would be affecting mostly the lighter luminosity values, which are basically whatever is closer to white. And we're seeing that right here, where we have the bluish purplish in the shadows and this yellowish tone in the highlights in the whites of our image. So it's a pretty straightforward adjustment layer in general. You can also change the bias of the fade from color to color by moving this diamond shaped icon in whichever way you want the color to blend mostly towards. So if I want a harsher blend from this blue to the orangish tone that I have over here, I would just drag this slider to the left and we can see that it's creating more of a harsher blend between these two colors. So things can get pretty fun when you start to play with how different color brightnesses interplay with different spots on the spectrum. So let's say I were to add a lighter color to the shadows range and a darker color to the highlights range. It kind of gives that solarized look, that inverted feel, but with way, way more control over the color list. And it's kind of just a really sick look. So definitely something to play with. And I hope this helps you understand gradient maps a bit more. And now that we know a little bit more about how this adjustment works, we can start exploring some creative uses for it. So gradient maps work best when there's a lot of luminosity values to work with. And they work best specifically when those values fall in, you guessed it, sort of a gradient pattern. So basically what that means is images with very smooth transitions between their luminosity values, like this sort of gradient right here, it's going to have a nicer, more tasteful look in those areas. So for example, if I were to pixelate this with my mosaic, and let's just bring that up a bit. It's not really all that nice. We don't have that smooth transition in between the luminosity values. So the gradient map isn't really working that well. But when I have this smooth gradient here, we get these really cool effects going on where there's a smooth transition from one luminosity value to the next. And another way you can play with this is just by blurring your artwork. Blurring it gives you that really smooth transition between those luminosities and that results in a really tasteful, colorful gradient look. So just to show you what that looks like really quickly, I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And as I increase this blur, we can see how those luminosity values fade into one another and the gradient map becomes very smooth and it plays off those values very well, giving it that shiny, glowy gradient. And to maximize that effect, what we can do is create a duplicate of our artwork, blur the duplicate, whatever blur you want. I'm using Gaussian Blur for this quick example. I'm gonna press OK. And then we're gonna create a layer mask on this layer, invert it, and now we can paint in the areas that we want blurred with a soft brush. And so if I paint in these areas right here, we get that really cool 
smooth airbrushed glowy effect going on we can pretty much put this wherever we want and this is a really cool creative use to add some nice gradient flow to your artwork so here's the before and after just check that out it's pretty cool and of course we can use this with any blur so if i were to use say motion blur on this that would also yield a pretty cool effect so you could just play with these settings here it's pretty damn cool but let me add a layer mask here and just paint in the parts that i want motion blurred and boom look at that pretty cool effect going on here and you can definitely experiment with all the blur types there's a ton for you to try gaussian blur motion blur and radio blur are all going to give you this really cool look but i highly suggest that you also check out the blur gallery so if i go into filter blur gallery we have a ton of new blur options here so let's go ahead and give field blur a test run so i'm going to go and up this blur here and with field blur you can actually create points of blur it's sort of like a live blur so i'm going to create points where i want and change the blur values of that and we can see this in live action how the gradient map affects those blurred parts of the image versus the more sharp parts of the image and this is a pretty crazy effect just to get from one adjustment layer and one filter on your image so yeah definitely go ahead and play around with these give motion blur gaussian blur a shot and definitely give field blur and all the blurs in the blur gallery a shot too they produce some really cool effects and this is looking pretty good already but i want to show you how to make it even cooler really quick so what we're going to do is create a new layer and do sorry and do shift backspace on our keyboard we're going to fill it with a 50 percent gray then we're going to go up here to filter camera raw filter and we're going to add grain to this image so go down to the effects and create that grain up to whatever you want i'm going to choose these settings of course you can play with these um this is kind of my go-to so i'm gonna press ok and i'm gonna set this to soft light and boom, now we have this really cool grainy look on this and it's kind of dithering the image below and we have the gradient map on top of this layer affecting all of this. So it's affecting the image below which we dithered with our noise and on top of that is a gradient map which is playing with all these colors and it's giving us this really cool effect. Definitely make sure to put the noise under the gradient map. I see a lot of people make the mistake of putting it on top and while it's not so bad of an effect, it just doesn't play with these values as much as you want them to. So here's the difference. This is with the grain on top of the gradient map and here's with it below. So it just works with the image a little bit more and gives a more tasteful effect and gets more out of that gradient map. And it just looks really well put together. You can see that this is quite the crazy effect that we're getting just from a few layers. So if I turn this off, this is the original and here's with the noise and the blur. And then we add that gradient map to finish it off and this is pretty cool now i want to check out the next creative use which is to add kind of a glowy halo to things or just cool glowy effects in general so to do this you're going to want to create a solid black layer so i'm going to make a new layer here and i'm going to fill this with black using shift backspace like we learned before that is the command to fill our layer so i'm going to fill this with black and on top of that i'm going to create a gradient map adjustment layer we don't have to mess with the actual gradient for now we'll do that later so just put these in a group and now set this group to screen. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this gradient map as well and just make it the standard black to white. All right, cool. So now what we can do is create a layer in between these two layers and paint in whatever I want using a soft brush. So I'm gonna grab a soft brush and just start painting here around this image. And you can't notice it now because I don't have the gradient map set to anything special, but this gradient map is going to be affecting that soft brush according to our gradient so let's go ahead and we'll just make a gradient here i'll choose a blue for the shadows more of an aqua for the highlights and boom we already get this really cool glowy look and the tones of it are mapped to our gradient map so it's giving that really nice fall off but of course there's a better way to you know work with this because this doesn't look that good so i'm going to delete that layer and i'm going to go make a new layer and do the same thing with a soft brush, but this time I'm gonna turn the opacity and the flow down. So I'm gonna turn the opacity down about 50% and the flow down to 30%. And now when we paint, we have much more control over this glow and its intensity. So I'm gonna paint around here and you can see that the more I go over with this brush, the more intense that glow. And this is a really cool effect just on its own. So if I were to hide this artwork and let me just delete this and I were just to play around with these spots just clicking 
in different places and changing the intensity of these dots you can get some pretty cool stuff especially if you mess with the gradient map i'm going to put more of a i don't know warmer tone in here somewhere i think that'd be cool and now we just have a cool blue to orangish gradient here nice so again really cool effect on its own one thing i use it for is to create kind of a cool glowy halo on things so i'm going to go ahead and delete that layer bring a another layer back an empty layer bring our artwork back and i'm going to select the subject out of this artwork so i'm going to go select subject and once i have my selection i'm going to put this empty layer in a group i'm going to make this selection a mask on the group and i'm going to invert it so that it's affecting everything but my selection then we go in this group and i'm going to start painting with this brush you could see that it creates this really cool halo around my subject the layer mask is actually a little bit finicky in here so let me cool so now you can better see how this effect works so we're kind of painting a halo around our subject i'm gonna go ahead and change the colors of this back to something more tasteful for the artwork and as i paint you can see the more i go over a certain place the more intense the glow and you can already determine the implications of that so this is a very powerful tool just for adding these really cool glows and halos to things i personally used it in this artwork right here i used it to get that nice glow around the edges of this fucking egg globe or whatever it is and also on the little cracks in here and i also used it on this artwork to get the glowing shining aura of the sun or whatever that is a planet and it worked really nice i added some lighting in there so definitely play with this and find a cool place to put it obviously you could be more meticulous with your brushing so if i wanted more of a tasteful look i'd probably go in here and pay more attention to what i'm doing of course you could add things like smoke or lightning to this like i did in my example which i'll do really quick just to show you so this lightning overlay is black and white but i can drag it in here and it will be under the gradient map so it will turn the colors of whatever our gradient is which you can see right here and if i flip this and play around with it set the blending mode to screen or lighten and let me just blur this a little bit because you know what i told you in the previous section of this video it's nicer when you have that smooth transition between the luminosity values of our image so if i were to blur this we could see that happen in real time we go in here again and just add more glow around the base of this lightning to give it more of a realistic look but of course play with this as you will one more tip is to create the same exact group that we have here and then just paint on the actual inside of the subject so we have more of that realistic glow fall off within the subject and on the outside of the subject. So if I were to duplicate that group, invert the layer mask again, this way it's only affecting the subject. And then I were just to paint inside of the subject. So we have some of that glow kind of creeping in, gives more of a realistic effect. And I would definitely try that out if you're trying to make some cool graphics with this. And of course, don't be afraid to add some grain to really set in the look. Yeah, really cool effect we got going on here. Definitely play with this one. And now moving on to the next use case is to do color grading and filters on your images. So I have this image here and I want to add, let's say more of a tint to the shadows and the highlights. Something I could do is add a gradient map to this. So I'll go in here, add that gradient map. And now I can map these colors to whatever I want. So I'm gonna choose more of a greenish here in the shadows and more of a warmer tint like an orange in the highlights and gradient maps are really good for this because you're able to fine tune the different luminosity values in your image so the shadows and the highlights you're able to affect those sort of independently so i have the green in the shadows here and the warmer tint in the highlights and all i have to do is go out of here and set this layer to soft light and boom i think this looks pretty good but if it's too harsh an effect you can always change the opacity down to something in the middle range like 50 60 and we still get some really nice but subtle color grading on this so if i zoom in you can see the before and after we now have those greens in the shadows and those warmer tones in the highlights and of course you can go back in here and get real specific with the colors so let's say i wanted like i don't know purplish reddish in the mid-tones i can do that just by adding a purple right here smack in the middle um, and press ok and cool now we've added some nice color depth to this image you can see this is a pretty powerful tool for just for some quick color grading or adding some filters on your images in case you want to maybe match it while you're doing some compositing 
or you just think the colors are off and you want to change it a bit, this is a great tool for that. Once again, here's the before and after, so you can see just how subtle but nice this effect can be. And of course, play with the opacity and whatnot to really dial in the intensity of this filter. All right, well, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, but only if you want to. And go ahead and go over to my site, DuranSupply.com, and download all the free stuff that I have available for you. We have this glow effect, this film glow effect, Xerox effect, lo-fi effect, some nice mock-ups for you. So definitely go ahead and download these by signing up at the bottom of this webpage. Again, that's DuranSupply.com. Thank you for watching. Peace out.